Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I am going to be going through my Southeast Asia budget. I have done this same video for my time in Europe. So if you are also thinking about going to Europe or just want to know how much Europe costs, then I will leave the video in a little card up here. It's just basically going to be the same format as the last video, but now we're talking about Southeast Asia because it is way more cheaper than Europe, let me tell you. But I'm sure you already knew that. Who doesn't know that? Asia is just freaking great. If you are new to my channel, then please hit the little subscribe button down below and join our little fam. If you do enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up because it really, really helps me out. That's basically it. So let's get into the budgeting. Okay, so just like in Europe, there was like a bunch of things that I had to pay for before I went. So that included my visa, which for Australians going over there, we have to like full on send our passport to like the embassy and get all this like shit done and then they send your passport back and stuff. It's like such a hassle. So I had to get a 90 day multiple entry visa because I did think that I was going back to Vietnam at the end, but I ended up like changing my plans. I didn't end up going there. Originally, I thought that I was going to be going back into Vietnam. So I got the 90 day multiple entry and that cost 170 Australian dollars. And also, yes, I will be talking in Australian dollars because I'm from Australia. Sorry to the people from anywhere else, but I'm sure you can just like put it into a little converter and work it out in another currency. 170 for my visa and then my flights. So I had a direct flight from Melbourne to Ho Chi Minh City on the way over and um, I went to Ho Chi Minh to Bangkok then Bangkok to Melbourne but I didn't actually get that first flight. I ended up just flying out from Bangkok because it was easier for me in the end. Flights were about 450 Australian dollars. I also had to pay for my travel insurance which was about 210 dollars. I also booked a Kentucky tour because I freaking had the best time on my first Kentucky so I was like I need to do another one. You guessed it I had the best time on my Asia one as well so if you're thinking about doing Kentucky freaking do it it's the best thing ever like so much fun starting to reminisce and get sad. Snap out of it. Talking money here and budgeting. And I also booked a couple of internal flights just to get between countries and stuff while I was over there. So that cost $215. So all up before I went, I paid about $2,500. Also forgot to mention which countries I'm, I went to. I'm not going there anymore. I'm already paid. Oh. It's, it's a sad time when, you, when your holiday is over. So I went to Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos and then at the end I also just went to Bangkok in Thailand. So I didn't go anywhere else in Thailand. After all of that stuff that I had to pay for before I went, um, I had my spending money which um, I also included my accommodation and all that stuff like in my spending money. My total spending money for, I was there for six weeks basically. I think it was like six weeks and three days or something like that. So my total spending money was uh, $2,745 and I realized I haven't worked out my average per night. I mean per day. Get a quick calculator out. So my like average spending money per day including accommodation for the whole time I was there was about $58. So if you are going for a little bit more, a little bit less time or whatever, you can probably use that as sort of guide for how much you want to spend if you're going to be traveling in the same way as me. So basically for my accommodation in total that cost me about $750. Honestly at this point point because I had been traveling for so long I was really over shared dorms and sharing rooms with people I just wanted my own space so I did pay the extra money to have my own room instead of sharing it with other people because I, I just couldn't deal with it at that point I was like I need my own space and it's still it's not really that much more expensive to have your own room when you were over there so I could sort of justify it so on average for the time I was there it was about $20 per night to have my own private room. So I had my own private room the whole time. I didn't get any shared dorms. My total for Southeast Asia to be 5,250 is actually a little bit more than I expected to spend there because I thought that I would be doing it a bit cheaper and getting shared dorms and like being more conscious of where I was eating and all of that sort of stuff. I was like, nah, screw it. I, I can't be bothered. <laughs> so yeah, basically the money I saved in Europe just went to all pay for Asia. But anyways, that is everything everything I have to say. Hopefully I've explained this in a way that you can understand and use it to budget for your own holiday. But if not, please like leave any questions down below or send me a message on Instagram or whatever your preferred social media is. And I can definitely answer anything you want to know over there. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And I love you all so much. I will speak to you soon. Bye.